Thank you all for tuning in to another episode of the Barrel Trap Podcast. We are a podcast that provides an unfiltered look into the craft beer industry from the untrained palates of two dumbass outsiders. I am Matthew Muncy, and I am joined, as always, by Dustin Wood. How are you doing, Dustin? I'm good. I'm good. I just came back recently from a dope-ass trip to, of all places, Arkansas. You know, that state that nobody knows where the fuck it is and also thinks it's Arkansas because, you know, we're Americans. Uh, went to Bentonville, Arkansas. There's a bunch of awesome mountain biking there, but there's also, well, there's several breweries, but there's one like super standout brewery. Um, it's Social Project Brewing, I think, yeah. And from the graphics all the way down to every detail in the building and every single beer we tried, it's mind blowing. It is one of those breweries that, like, it, it's a side project. It's a prairie. It's all up there with those guys. They make unique styles, unique flavors. It's a cool place. The owner's super friendly, chatty, has a lot of information. And we happen to have a beer that you're not supposed to actually get unless you're part of their membership clubs. They have two of them. And I'll talk about that here in a little bit. But while I was there with one of my best friends, Curtis, we sat, we talked to the owner and the bartender two times because we went back. Because again, we started with probably the best brewery in Bentonville, arguably the best brewery in Arkansas. And I would go back any day. We tried some things. Then we looked on the wall and said, what the fuck? There's signs that say we can't have these beers. Like I can't even try them. I can't sample them. I can't put them in a flight. This is some bullshit. Like, I'm not from here. Hook me up. And we were lucky enough that we were either, one, smooth enough talkers, or two, educated in beer enough that we could carry on a conversation with the right people, and they let us try some beers that we're not technically supposed to try. And also, let me buy this dope-ass bottle of savory truffle from them. And I'm going to tell you what. It's insane, but it is a Willet bourbon barrel aged stout with coconut, Mac Marcona, Marcona almonds, and Kaya cacao nibs. I like um, to imagine that it's Kia Kia <laughs> Kia cacao nibs. cacao nibs. Um, but man, as far as uh, before we get into flavors and all the nonsense, as far as label and bottle. It's a really cool textured label, really awesome graphics, and then the wax. It's like this midnight blue with like sparkles in it, which makes me think of Starry Night. Like it's almost a really cool Starry Night wax, and it was a pain in the ass to open. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of wax on that damn bottle, but I do like I do like the blue color of it. Uh, I've never seen a navy blue wax say, before. Yeah. I mean, I know it's just a navy blue crayon. Yeah, maybe but... Indiana City, because they, they did, when they were doing Ales from the Crypt. Oh, they did different, like, yeah. yeah. They did a gold wax, which I really liked. Uh, what? Uh, Sean did a blue one, but his was crayon wax. Yeah. His was like, <laughs> his was like cerulean blue, however. Yeah, well, he did a blue one. I do like this label. This label, this label would pop on a store shelf. Well, it would... Imagine it next to like side project or other yeah. things that are. I mean, I would just imagine it next to anything. Like it's so simple. It's just so simple. Yet there's like this fancy is the wrong word. It is very fancy, but like higher tier. Yeah, yeah. Sophisticated way of it. Like the, whatever the font is that they use, it looks like someone hand wrote yeah. this. Uh, and then, you know, did the little doodle. Like none of it looks computer generated or anything so there's there's that quality to it it just it is something that you would at least pick up and you don't know what the hell it is just based off of the logo and the name yeah it's called savory Savory truffle it's savoy truffle it's not savory savoy truffle yeah my fault i i read it as savory on the bottle but yeah i did originally too and then you said (laughs) it. i'm like wait no that's not right it's savoy Savoy truffle truffle. okay what does savoy mean yeah i don't know i'm gonna need you to google that guy with the computer but Matt's right. It it is one of those bottles you would pick up and go, okay, what are you? 
Savoy is a cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> cabbage truffle? Hold on here. Uh, I think you're a member of the Royal House of Italy. Okay. So maybe so they just took truffle. it as a as a royal, yeah, royal truffle. Like a fancy okay. truffle. I mean, to be fair, we shouldn't have this bottle, so that's probably right. So when we experienced the brewery, we walked in. It was quiet, which is super strange because, like I said, by far the best brewery in Bentonville. I mean, no questions asked, zero questions asked. We talked to them about that, and they said, you know, we get the, like, a rush of people, but we also are your, like, destination brewery for people that are in the know. So I think they understand that they're a unique brewery. They make styles that are really well done, but they also make bold-ass flavors. And then I was talking to Matt earlier. They have two different, like, clubs. And, Matt, before I jump into those, what are your thoughts on like mug club memberships and things like that? Uh, how do you feel about them overall? Not knowing what you know about these, but to be honest, I'm super indifferent to them. Uh, will I ever join one? No. The reason for that is I do not go to a, to a singular brewery enough for that to ever be a thing. There are, you know, I don't even want to say that because that's probably not true either. I was going to say, there's probably breweries that I would go to if they were located here, but I feel like, as we've talked about on some other episodes, eventually the beer is not special anymore, and then yep. you you kind of stop craving it. So, yeah, there's nothing around, because, um, like, Books and Brews used to have that. Um, Deviate did something similar, like a... Yeah, there's just a whole bunch of places though. that... One, I've never lived close enough to anything. So, like, if... Scarlet Lane started one, and fuck, they could have one for all they I know, but I don't think they do. They do but. but if they had one, I would at least maybe think about it. But I still don't go there enough. I've lived five minutes down the road for over two shit. How a year long and a half. Been? A year and a half now. Because we've been here two years. So Yeah, a year and a half, and I've been there once. Yeah, we've been once, and I think that's the only time I've gone. Yeah, well, no, I guess, well, that's the one time I went and got beer. I've been to tracks a few times, but I didn't get beer when I went to tracks. But I just don't go enough, because I go and I either buy beer, most of it is I just buy beer at Meyer because I'm lazy as shit, and they have such a good beer selection that it's just easier to do it that way, or I'm getting beer from you, um, or Greg, or somebody like that, like, yeah. eh, I got enough uh, coming around. I'm not indifferent to it. I don't care for it because I think it depends on what they're doing with it. Stuff like this, I have a stuff like this is unique because it almost feels like a Kickstarter yeah. instead of a mug club type thing. That's what it feels like. So. Yeah, because you're essentially, which I would be a hundred percent down for that. If places were like, we're going to brew this beer. And if you want to pay for it now, and then you'll get it when it comes out. I would be a hundred percent on board with that, which is basically what this is. Yeah. Um, so the reason I asked Matt about the mug club is they have two club options, but it's a mug club with some extra benefits. So social project has what they call the social club. It's $150, an exclusive membership club for hazy IPA and sour lovers. Um, basically it, it allows you to design two custom beers for the social club. These beers will not be available to the public. Hence the things that we were talking about. They basically release fruited sours and hazy IPAs. When you do brew those with the brewer, you get f a free four pack and a free pour of each of the releases in the tap room. You also get some other discounts, a private party and things like that. And then $1 like off of your purchase of like four packs and things. But you get limited access to beers, and you get free four packs of the beers that you help brew. So the same thing happens with the Stout, which is called their society membership. But you get to help brew like a Russian Imperial Stout or a regular Stout, and then a pastry Stout, which would be one of these, like the Savoy Truffle that we're drinking, or the Nash Vegas something or other that I drank while I was there. So when you say you get to help to brew, like you actually physically get to yeah. help brew it? And you get to help like choose styles and like adjuncts and things. 
So I don't know if it's like a round table at the beginning with like if you, me, and like Sean purchased a membership and it was us and eight other people and we just all like said, I think this would be interesting, this would be interesting. And then when they came up with four beers throughout the year and released one every quarter, or if it's like you literally get to be your beer and then my beer and then Sean's beer. I don't think that's the case because then they release like 40 a year or more because they have like 50, 45 of these memberships remaining. So there's no way they're releasing 45 plus like limited edition stouts like this. Yeah, it feels more like maybe it'd be like a poll yeah. between everyone and you get to choose based on that. But it's an interesting concept that I think if I live nearby, I would I would join one. I would be interested enough to join something where I get to have a beer and I've done this with Sean at Copacetic, but it's not, I mean, you know, I didn't pay for it. I mean, I paid for the beers, but he released a beer that we brewed together for an event and that's unique. So I think it'd be fun to be part of this. That does sound like it would be pretty, pretty interesting. How much? Uh, so the regular one is one fifty for, for the year. year. Yeah. And then the society for the barrel aged stouts and pastry stouts, you get all the same benefits of the social club, but you also get like barrel aged stouts and stuff. So you do get access to this to the other club as well, which is cool. But it's two seventy five, which honestly is not terrible because you get at least four bottles of like super rare stouts. You get access to everything else, and you get a free pour of each one of these beers in the tap room. So an extra, but that's an extra one twenty five for four beers, maybe four or I mean you get eight, you get a pour and a bottle of it. Actually, four free bottles of each aged stout and two free bottles of each pastry stout. So say they do a, one a quarter, that's sixteen regular stouts and eight pastry stouts. Yeah, I guess that. I mean, this bottle alone was like twenty five bucks. So. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I, I could, I could see that being worth it then, because I definitely feel like now that I, I never had even considered the whole Kickstarter idea, but like kind of talking it through, it's like that does make a lot of sense. Like if you put it out there, you know, especially some of these ones that get made on a regular basis. If you said, "Hey, we're taking basically pre-orders for it." Like that would be interesting because because then like you wouldn't have to go like death and taxes. Like yeah. if I could pre-order a bottle and just go pick it up like the day after or something like that'd be perfect. Like I understand they want to get you in to do the the whole thing, but like maybe I don't want to go to a festival. Yeah. But then I still have to wait and see. Is there anything left? And like the super rare stuff is hard to get sometimes like I feel like that's just a good way of because there's certain ones that you're not oversaturating the market oh, yeah. like I could see Dark Lord not doing this but uh Sanatorium is a perfect example like yeah <laughs> not anymore. oh no beer still exists sorry yeah I was thinking uh Black Acre yeah no uh, uh beer brewery so you know if if you if they had one where it was just like it's hard to get you know, like maybe take some pre-orders or maybe that's what sucks is like, then they only get, they can only brew so much of it, Yep. but maybe the pre-orders allow them to brew more. Yeah. Maybe the pre-orders allow you to buy double the recipe. Yeah. Cause you, you can, can make- say, this is what we normally sell. Then let's take all these pre-orders and we just essentially, yeah, make a double batch of this. And then you make, because we're going to sell it anyways, double the money. Cause people are going to buy it. Yeah. But, uh, let's get on a brass tax here. Um, there's so much happening in this beer. And see, and I don't feel like there's a lot happening. It's really? very, it's very, very good. But I don't know if I would say it's a lot happening, which is actually for me a good thing because, well, so it's not a lot in like a uh, an overwhelming way. It, dude, it tastes like almost like a light almond joy. Mm-hmm. But the the back end of the flavor is so chocolate truffle that it's not even funny. Yeah. 
Like you like get rich chocolates. Like those very... fancy fucking like uh row for a share or mm-hmm. uh those gold plated ones that yep. like that is what I feel like the very end of this beer is. Well, I feel like this matches what we and we're not rating this one at all. We're not putting this on a Y'all don't want us to. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably be way up there. It'd be high. Yeah. And people would People don't want to hear another Imperial one, but... Also, you can't get your hands on it, so it's not fair. Yeah, it matches exactly what what we like about the Imperial Stouts. It's very full-bodied. Oh, thick. It's it's, thick. Um, it's dark. You can tell like... whatever stout this is normally made from yep. is good, because this is just a very tasty stout in general. And then, yeah, like you get the cocoa, or the, the coconut, you get the almond, you get the cacao nibs, but it does. It tastes like an almond joy, but it's like a very subtle almond joy. It's, it's like not a, overly it's like a classy coconutty. almond joy. Yes, it is very <laughs> like this is like a fine wine kind of beer yeah. is the is the way I would describe it. Because like when you have and I I may be talking about on my ass here, but like I feel like when you have a nice classy bottle of wine everything blends well together and it's very subtle. It's not, nothing is overpowering. Nothing's fighting for attention. Exactly. And that's how this one is. Like everything just works perfectly. It's blended, man. Like $25 is like way low for what this beer should honestly be. The notes, the notes on the nose too. There's so much almond mixed with chocolate that it's crazy. It's like the amount of like raw almond flavor, like smell, not, not like almond joy because that's almost like fake almond. But if you like, I eat raw almonds mm-hmm. because I just love almonds. But if you were to put almonds in dark chocolate and smell them, like the like blend them together, it would damn near smell like this. Yeah, you you just kind of get a little bit of everything in the nose from yep. the chocolate, the malt, the almonds, the coconut, the cow nibs, and the like- barrels there. But it's subtle. It's more of that warming <laughs> yep. part to it. Man, but there was not a bad beer there. They were educational. They appreciated people that could talk to them about beer, but also could talk to anybody in there, which was great. Super inviting. And then one of or the, so the only bartender that we worked with, uh, she told us, we asked where the best bottle shop was. I have a nice tangent about this. Curtis and I went to, um, I think it was Ozark, that one of the breweries there, one of the bigger breweries, and we asked what the best bottle shop was in town. And the bartender literally looked at us like we were fucking crazy. He was like, what is a bottle shop? Like, a place where they sell good beer? Like, a liquor store? He's like, oh, yeah, a liquor store. None of ours are all that great. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. So we left, and then we went back to social. I think it was either that night or the night after. <clears throat> we asked the girl bartender there. You're we like, okay, where's a good bottle shop? Somebody told us we needed to go to uh, Macadoodles, but Macadoodles is in Missouri or in Fayetteville. And I was like, that's fucking really far. She's like, actually, I have a really fun story for you. There's one here called Guess Who? It's secretly Macadoodles. But Bentonville would not let Macadoodles come in to town. So the wife of the owner of Macadoodles opened her own, like, uh, incorporated company and branded it Guess Who? And it's the same fucking company. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so there's a liquor store in Bentonville called Guess Who? That is literally Macadoodles in disguise, but they carry all the Macadoodles branded stuff. So think Kirkland's at Costco, mm-hmm. but Macadoodle branded. But it says like uh, instead of Macadoodle branded, it says like the other entity. <laughs> <laughs> I found that fantastically funny because that's just literally like a stab at people. Like, Haha, fuck you. We can do what we want. But we went there because we had this recommendation from somebody that's in the industry. But, man, honestly, a thousand percent, if you get to Bentonville, go there. Go here. Go to Sosa Project. Talk to Chris. He's the owner. Awesome dude. 
awesome knowledge about the beer industry. Fantastic beer. This beer is phenomenal. And I'm super sad I only have one bottle. I'll probably have to text Chris and, you know, figure out how to get more. This has got a 4.61 on untapped. The brewery as a whole has a 4.0. I will say this. Their can art Mm -hmm. is not good. It looks like window clip art. So it's interesting that you say the rest of it. Um, And then like, there's this, like, like if you found this at a bottle shop, let obviously you're not, but let's just say you did. And then you went to that brewery. I feel like that's a little, that's a little put off because you're expecting almost this, side projecty. Like you're, this looks way fancier than the other. Oh yeah. For sure. Branding. And like that, I don't, so, that's not good. It's like, interesting to it's me. Way too different. I don't like the, the branding per se of their other beers because it does look like you took clip art. Yeah. And threw it. But I love the naming convention. It's all song related. Oh, okay. Berry Licious. Yeah. It's all goo goo for Nashville. Nash Vegas. Nash Vegas, yeah. Uh and then they had like uh some of their hazies were like uh in the like uh in the n- middle of nowhere or Rivers and Roads. River. These Daybreak. Rivers and Roads. Turn the tide, violet sky, space between us. Birds of a feather. Yeah, so they're all musical inspired, which is cool. Now, those labels that you see on those cans in the tap room look awesome. Okay. I was going to say, because they... They look bad on the cans, and I, I talked to Curtis about that, too, because we saw the cans in the liquor store. But in the tap room, they're printed like these, like my the wood on top and wood on bottom and they're hanging. Okay. So they, most of them are very nature inspired because they're like a rowboat or like a, yeah, I can see that something like they look cool on the wall, but they look bad on a can. Yeah. Like some of them, it's like, it looks like a cool piece of art, but it doesn't like, it's not beer art. Like this looks like art you would see put into it's like Van Gogh on a beer can. Yeah. Yeah, I guess if you want to call or it Van like, Gogh. I well, was I was honestly thinking more of like this is like fancy art that you would get in the picture frame <laughs> kind of stuff. Like it's yeah. all just kind of very plain and gen- generic is the best way to which to phrase sucks it. because their logo is awesome. Yeah, that B yeah. is awesome. Like I've seen some of the glasses that people have posted on Untap and I really want one. Like this glass, I'm drinking out of uh, one of their glasses, and I love it. There's one that's just the giant B, yep. and I really want that glass. Um, I love the typography that they used for their logo, mm-hmm. which is why I bought the glass that I have, because it has that handwritten typography underneath the B, which makes it seem nice and fancy. And I poured a stout in this glass the other night or last night, and... The wife watched me pour it, and she was like, that was fucking beautiful. I was like, what do you mean? She said, watching this really dark beer pour into the glass with the gold leaf print on it was just, like, mind-boggling how beautiful it was. I would say it would definitely be interesting to get some more of their beers. Obviously, you got to try them, but, like, just for me, most, I mean, on Untapped, it's a bunch of fours. Dude, this, their dark Czech lager... Fuck! That sounds like something I would fall in love with. I Dude, love a good. Crazy I should have bought a four pack. Beer. Yes, you should have bought a four pack of everything. Yeah, you know, you know what I wasn't doing Except when for I was this there. Beachfront property. That's a three six. What are we doing here? You know what I wasn't doing when I was there. Working. Uh, thinking. Working. Yeah, but you have a co-host who does work. Well, yeah. Where was my eight hundred dollars shipment, Matt? <laughs> Why couldn't you just bring it back? You drove. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's what I mean. Give me eight hundred dollars to put in the truck. That's fine. He had to do his ask. But I'm gonna tell you. I mean, I can I can reach out to Chris and talk to him about getting us beers. But I was excited to be able to talk about this, so that's why it's kind of a unique episode. Just kind of hey, check it out. It's awesome. They have a beer called Turtley Enough. 
Oh, that's <laughs> fucking fantastic. Am I turtly enough for the turtle club? Turtle, turtle. I done spilled on my shirt. Ah, oh, sucker for you. <laughs> Ocean Avenue. All right. Yeah, they got, I mean, yellow card song right there. Throwback. For all y'all emo heads. Yeah. I mean, outside of, outside of the, the weird art, which I mean, not everything is going to be perfect. Not everything is going to be to your liking. It is what it is. But if the beer is good, it doesn't really fucking matter. But like, does, when they put those on shelves in a store, does that get people to buy? So I talked to them about their distribution and they said they are in like two or three liquor stores in Bentonville and then everything else is sold out of the tap room. Yeah. And so they sell I, when out. When it comes out of the tap room, it doesn't matter. Cause, yeah. Yeah. Because people aren't coming in and browsing. But like, that is a big thing. I mean, we talk about it all the time is does your can art stand out? And it may change when they get. And a lot of times it's distro, box of art. course, right? Like, yeah. But. This feels like like a side project or a, like a deviate or where they're just not going to do that. Yeah. Because people are going to come to them. And when they do releases, they sell out. And this beer is sell out for sure. Like, I'm not joking. I, I mean, I wasn't joking when I said $25 is too cheap for this beer. This is fucking really good. It's weirdly good. Like, But in like a... In it's not too sweet, it's not too like malty, it's not too roasty, and it doesn't feel heavy. Yeah, it's drinkable. It's fucking yeah, twelve percent, but, but it you, feels like a six percent beer. Yeah, like you're drinking it, and it's but it's got so many flavors that and so that, much nose and that bourbon like isn't overpowering, so it doesn't feel like you're drinking a barrel aged beer. It's there. On the viscosity, and yeah. it's there on the very back end, but not in a bad way because it hits that chocolate note, and then it's a warm chocolate note, so it's like a hot chocolate. Yeah, it's like if you gave someone this beer, they would know it's barrel-aged, but like it's not, it's not crazy. I think they could pick every flavor out, too. Most, like a decent drinker could pick yeah. most flavors. Like if we gave this to a friend of ours, like Kevin Boyd, he could pick out the flavors if we gave it to anybody else that enjoys like your wife could probably pick out the flavors yeah i mean you would at least get the coconut and the chocolate and stuff like that but it's yeah it's good i like, i love it i like, also am a sucker for coconut and chocolate beers like but this you isn't put a overbearing co- coconut no either. but i'm still a sucker for oh, it yeah. like you put something that tastes like an almond joy in front of me and i'm usually gonna fucking like it if this were to be a tier beer it's an s tier for goddamn sure yeah if you want to talk about like literal just one off probably never gonna be made again beers like this is a, oh yeah. it's is this S-tier is just as s tier as s tier gets like yep this is really good like in the fact that they sold you i mean yeah congrats on being a fucking salesman because <laughs> the other beer that i had that was one of the ones that was supposed to be for this release and was released yesterday or day before yesterday so the like 25th give or take was that uh goo goo for nash vegas and it was an imperial stout with marshmallow peanuts aged in a barrel that was like whiskey but a banana whiskey or a banana bourbon or something like that because he told us about it because i asked him i said should we taste banana in this like says it's uh so goo goo for nash vegas uh imperial double pastry aged in single natural bourbon barrel for over 14 months then conditioned on kya single origin <laughs> cacao nibs, roasted peanuts, and marshmallows. Jesus. Uh, being based off Nashville's favorite treat, this beer is full of decadent chocolate, roasty peanuts, and a nice splash of roasted marshmallow. The fuck is Nashville's favorite treat? I don't know. Like a fucking turtle? Is that roasty peanuts? So chocolate, peanuts, and marshmallow. What the hell is that? A fancy fucking s'mores? <laughs> If you've ever had the candy, this is pretty much an exact replica. The fuck is candy? candy? (laughs) (laughs) I'm not from Nashville. I don't know what this is. But, so that beer, both myself and Curtis drank it, and I I was like, all right, do you taste 
clove or banana in this? And he's like, well, yeah, what the fuck? That's weird. And so I went up and talked to Chris and I asked, you know, should like what f- what flavor should I get out of this beer? Oh, it's a fucking Goo Goo Cluster. Uh, God, we are dumb. Yes, I've had a Goo Goo Cluster. Those are really good. I didn't know that was like, oh, they're from Nashville. So that makes sense. But, so when we were there, I talked to him and I was like, all right, I, I get like some clove or banana out of this. And he was like, whoa, man, I'm I'm surprised that you pulled that. And when we tasted the like stuff that was in the barrel when it showed up, it had like a super banana smell and flavor to it. So I don't know like what that is in whiskey or bourbon. Never never, banana and whiskey. (laughs) No idea, but it came from the barrel is what he was saying. And I was like, that's interesting. So, so good. Well, it'd be interesting to know what that's the problem is they don't say what they just say a single Nashville bourbon barrel. Whoa. Okay. There's only a few bourbons in Nashville. Like 30. <laughs> but so good. This beer is fucking awesome. They were fucking awesome. If you're in the area, it is a two hour drive from Tulsa, which we went to. It is 30 minutes from Fayetteville. It's an hour from Kansas City. Make the drive. If you can find bottles, trade for them. Treat it like side project. I guarantee you'll love it. Every single thing I had was fucking awesome. I don't think I'll ever be in Arkansas, but it does make me want to make a trip down there just to go to this brewery. Dude, I would go back just for this brewery. Like, I I told a girl that lived there, I said, look, if I moved back, I would be a member of both of these things and probably a fucking way too familiar local. (laughs) How how do we become a member and just have them shit? Like, can we just, can you just include the shipping? Like, we'll pay you $275. We can't get any of the other benefits. Plus shipping. No, no, no. We pay you two seventy five. dollars oh, yeah, none of the other benefits. But we yeah. can't get any of the other benefits because we live in Indiana. But then that just includes shipping us the beer. We could probably make that pitch. I'd, I'd probably pay for, look, for 16 fucking beers a year or something like that. I'd, I'd pay, pay that in a heartbeat. Pitch. I, yeah. I would pitch that. I have yeah. his... Actually, well, I don't have my wallet with me. In my wallet, I have his uh, business card, so... I would, I would pay for that. I'll send it out. I don't you know. hear me we out, Chris? Can't you're write you're it off listening as an right now. Yet, but at a if you're listening point, right now, Chris, we're gonna reach out to you and we want some more of your beer because yeah, when this God comes out in like two weeks, <laughs> because goddamn, <laughs> definitely this is this is good beer. You can tell this brewery makes good beer. This is fantastic. So, I guess if you're ever in the Bentonville, which if area, you're a mountain biker, go to it is. They call themselves the mountain bike capital of the world. It is where the U.S. mountain bike team trains. There are over like 300 plus miles of mountain bike trails. It's insane. But it is also fucking good beer. So on that note, enjoy a good beer and cheers. Cheers.